morning everyone. Glenda Mollett here and I'm stamping in my craft room with you this morning and we're going to make this really cute um, thinking of you or happy birthday card uh, um, using the honeybee bundle and some of the golden honey designer paper. This card I cased from Deborah Harrison. So while I check and make sure we're oriented properly, there's the recipe for you if you'd like to create one yourself. The honeybee, honeybee, the golden honey design, especially designer paper has been unorderable for a few weeks, but it's back in stock as of yesterday and ready to be ordered again. You can only get this free with a $60 order during celebration. Now, hang on, I forgot to get my big shot out. I thought I was all ready and then at the last minute, it's panic city. Okay, one die cutting machine out. And I did forget to put the do not disturb on my phone, so hopefully it won't get too many interruptions. So, Coastal Cabana, Whisper White, some of the Golden Honey, especially designer paper. Ink is Memento Daffodil Delight. And then the Dark Daffodil Delight and Dark Pool Party blends for some coloring. And of course, Wink of Stella, because we can never have too much Wink of Stella. Okay, card kit coming up. So how have you been all week? It's been a... An exciting week in our household. Nothing out of the ordinary. It's just been really exciting. I had lots of stuff happening in my studio and in my craft room. And I did a, a fun fold yesterday that is absolutely amazing. So I will share that at the end of the Facebook live video today so that you can see what's coming up. I have started doing fun fold cards that are over the top in... Uh, in class situation and the people who come to the class bring their own cutter and their own scoring board so that we make the card together from scratch. The, all the cutting and embossing and all the usual stuff is done in class but they also do the cutting and the scoring and the putting the fun fold part together too. Okay, card kit is here's the inside of the card and that's where I use the the coloring the stamp and blends um, I also stamped and die cut a B to put on the inside <coughs> pardon me frogs back need a drink it's right here here get it out of the way okay so there's our coastal cabana card base and for some reason all my corners of my Coastal Cabana card bases are caved in. It's okay. We're fine. Then you need two pieces of five and a quarter by four. One goes inside and one is for the outside to build things on. This one we're going to stamp and die cut all of our images. This is a piece of the Golden Honey designer paper and there's the image that I chose to use. And then a piece of Coastal Cabana to make the scallopy thing. Alrighty then. I'm hoping that you guys are having a wonderful day. Today we get grandchildren after school. It will be an amazing day. And, he, and yesterday had a video chat with our northern grandson. He's so cute. Okay, let's stamp the inside first. All we're going to stamp on the inside is a flower. Apparently, I'm short of block, but we'll fake it. Okay, so inking up with Memento ink. And just doing a flower. And then I'll stamp the B on the separate piece. Put the flower off to the side. And we'll put... Oh, I didn't show you what we're using. Duh. Morning, Penny. I know you're probably not listening because you turned your volume down, but that's okay. I'm glad you're watching. Okay, we're using the Honeybee Bundle. I've done a lot 
recently with this stamp set and the coordinating dies because they're so much fun. It these are the the um, die cuts that we're going to use. This one is from the Be Mine stitched dies that came out at Valentine's last year, but carried forward in the um, annual catalog. So there's the die cuts to cut the flowers out. This one makes a really cute honeycomb. And then there's the the intricate bee. And I can show you one of those because I cut out some and then I keep them in the back of my die envelope so they're easy to find when I need them. So there's what the intricate bee looks like. I'm just going to get my cards. My cards from my honeybee class that we had on Tuesday this week. So this is one of them. This one um, is a GMO, which all, for all of you that are new are Glenda Mollett original. So it opens up, it's a double Z fold card. And these bees are hanging on a couple of pieces of window sheet. Look at that. Isn't that cute? And then the back, you have the back to do all your writing and everything on. Okay, that was one card. And then I also did, oops, a shaker card for that class. So see, all the shakers. So inside there is the um, iridescent sequins and the sequins from Celebration that come with the metallic twine pack, which is no longer available. They've sold out, but... I managed to get some, so there we go. Isn't that cute? And there's the inside. And I also sponged around the outside of the inside. Does that make any sense? Sometimes it makes sense and sometimes it doesn't. Okay, and this was the third card we made in the class. This one a case, or a, it was inspired from Jan Clothier. Here's the inside. And this one, you just do some, um, what did they call that? I call it gradual shading, but there is a term and it escapes my postmenopausal brain at the moment. But we did some sponging with the sponge brayers on the background. And this is a big piece of that golden honey specialty designer paper. Yeah, so that was a class that we did at the beginning of the week. And today I have a fun fold class, but I didn't bring that stuff down this end of the house. It's way up at the other end of the house. So that's the bundle that we're going to use. We're also using the Be Mine, st stitched Be Mine dies. There's a few dies in this one, and that's where the scallop, the scallop strip comes from. And this one says, thinking of you, sweet friend. And I'm going to use Happy Birthday today, and I'm using the Happy Birthday from the Little Ladybug stamp set, which you can get free with a party order of 375 or more. And if you'd like to plan a party, give me a call. We can do them in my studio. don't have to do them in your house. Okay, and then the accents. I accented the flowers with some holiday rhinestones. I love the fact that we have so many rhinestone packs available. We have um, Noble Peacock, Holiday, and then, of course the clear ones. And then if you have your stamping blends, you can make them any color you want. Okay, there's the, that's the inside. So I'm just going to put that to the side for now. And we'll stamp, we'll stamp some bees. We need two bee, three two small bees, one big bee, and then the honeycomb as well. So I'm going to stamp the honey, honeycomb. No, it's not the honeycomb. It's the beehive. I'm going to stamp the beehive first because it takes up the most space on my cardstock. And I'm just inking it up. Well, this is a, a solid stamp. So good inkage is really important. So I'm just going to stamp that on my piece of whisper white, hold it down firmly and firmly run my finger back and forth. So what that does is if you happen to get ink around the edges, see how I did, I got ink around those edges. If you do it the way I did it by rubbing your finger and not rocking, then you don't get those issues. If you put it down and do this, 
you see you get the shadowing issues, which is not an issue <clears throat> or not a problem if you're um, cutting things out. But if you're not cutting it out, that's a problem because that's a big area to um, stick an embellishment on to get rid of that. Now this is memento ink, so it's a little tap and twist motion to get good inkage on that because you want really dark bees. You don't want light bees. You want a dark bee. So I need one big one and I need two of the little ones. So do the same thing. Tap and twist. Tap and twist. And run your finger over it. For one. Tap and twist. And run your finger over it. And there's the two. So while I'm here, I'm going to stamp. Maybe I'll wait to. I was going to stamp the um, the happy birthday, but I think I'll wait till I get it all assembled because then I know where I'll know where to put it. Okay, magnetic platform coming out. All right, stamping is done. So let's just get rid of this ugly scrap paper. There we are. All right. So remember, check for bows in your plates because if you have, if it's bowed, put the bow down, then you get better attachments with your attaching, better <clears throat> magnetizing, a better con there, <clears throat> a better contact with your dies if you have the. Um, the bow down. Okay, I'm not going to be able to do that big B because it's too close to the hive. All right. Okay, we're just going to move this a bit so that my die cooperates. Do that or I have to get a piece of washi tape out, which I can do. Okay, now don't breathe while you carry it over to the die cutting machine. Look at that little turkey. I know I'm anal, but I like my die cuts to be even. And sometimes it takes a while to get them even and then they'll move and then you have to start all over again, but that's okay. I don't mind that at all. Okay, first cut is done. So we have that piece. And one little bee is done for that piece. And this little bee here, to be or not to be, and the big bee. So the longer you take to line your die up, the better your cutting is going to be because you want it even. So I line it up with the the big parts first, so along the wings I line it up first and then I pay attention to the legs and the antenna are and then do some fine tuning. It's not going to be perfect because whatever is in life, right? There we go. So yesterday was basketball day at our son's school and our oldest grandson belongs to the school basketball team and he had an amazing goal yesterday it came from almost midcourt and popped plopped right into the net he was so excited and man were we excited for him and of course yeah you have to be um, a little bit nonchalant about the whole thing when you get kids that are coming up for teenage years. So it's like, hold your mouth, Grandma. You can't jump up and down and say, way to go. As much as I wanted to. It was an amazing goal. Okay, so the beehive is popped up on dimensionals back down here in the corner. This bee goes on here, so I need a dimensional under that wing, or a piece of dimensional, 
under this wing like that because the other one is going to lay on top of the the beehive and then this one does the same thing but it's opposite so I just need a I'm going to put the, the double piece on here just because I can so that'll go there like that okay so meanwhile back at the ranch I need this piece and my die cutting machine and this this die that comes from the bee mines the stitched bee mine dies and I left lots of room here so it doesn't really matter where you put it or how straight you are and I've given um, in the kit I always cut when I do a strip I always cut the strip longer than needed because then if you're like me and you're OCD then you can get it centered on your card and cut off the excess. So you have to do all the assembly on your um, card front first so that you can cut off the excess. Okay, so there's the strip. So the it goes, it's attached to this piece of designer paper. So first of all, you have to figure out which way you want your designer paper. I think I'll put mine that way. And then I put some tear and tape along here. Like that. And the easiest way to do this is if you have the the die cut piece on the table and hold it down with your finger or something. Now I wanted it which way? I want it this way and I'm putting it on this edge so I need to turn it over. Now's where you'd kind of plan where your bumps are. And I'm holding it up off of the adhesive for a bit till I get it all lined up. There we are. All right. Now we need more tear and tape. And you can use either side of the the designer paper. It doesn't really matter which side you use because they're both equally cute. All right. take the liners off of these little pieces because they're too small to do rabbit ears with. Let's throw those away. Rabbit ear the other two. Now this one I put right to the edge of the white. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. But this one I chose to on this card so I think I'm going to move it over a little bit so I can show you um, what it looks like when you have a oh that tape is a little bit too long it's peeking out past the edge of the designer paper so I just have to I just have to peel back the liner a bit and just roll it back so that it doesn't show anymore there we go that's better okay let's start again so I'm just lining this up I'm going to leave about an eighth maybe a sixteenth of an inch over from the edge of the white. Can you see? I'm hoping you can. Okay. And put it down. Pull out the pull out the rabbit ears. Now when you you can flip it over and just cut off this excess. And then you're not dealing with something being too short for your card front. There you go. See how easy that is to do? And it makes a huge difference. Okay. Uh-oh. Phone's ringing. Uh-oh. I'm sorry. I'm not answering it. Okay, so.
sorry. That's what happens when I don't hit the do not disturb button. Alright, so we're going to put the beehive on next. And that goes down here in this corner. And right like that. Now I'm going to step the happy birthday. So this is the, the sentiment we're going to use. And it's from the little ladybug stamp set with memento ink. So a little tap and twist. And getting it easy or getting it straight sometimes is not easy. So if you put it purposefully on an angle, oh, oh, I tapped it. Put it purposefully on an angle, then you don't have to worry about it. How easy is that? Okay, now let's get the tear and tape on there. There we are. Burnish it on so it's easy to remove the liners, I hope. Oh, good morning, Carmen. All right. A oh, Penny probably finds this a little on the boring side because this is the card we made when she was at the seniors group yesterday. So it's kind of a repeat. But it's so cute and it's so easy to do. So you could make a whole bunch of these. Uh-oh. There's that mist liner. Pokey tool. Whoops. It just scooted away from me. I just got to get the liner off of this last piece here. There we are. Ripped again, really? What is going on this morning? Sorry, this is taking a little bit longer than normal. There we are. So now we just have the bees to put on, but I'm going to. Oh, I put the. That's okay. I was going to color them first, but it doesn't matter. I'll put it on and then I'll color it. And we'll have this be, once I put a little bit of tape on his wing, her wing, maybe that's why the bee is so big, because it's the queen bee. There you go. Okay, so this one we'll put right there. This one needs a little tiny piece of tear and tape as well. And I'm going to cut it with my scissors because... It needs to be so small, rather than off of my dispenser, like I normally do. All right. We'll just scoot that bee in right about there. And dark daffodil delight. And we'll color the bees in. Doesn't take too long. And I like to color their necklaces, as somebody called it in class on, on Tuesday. The bee necklace. Now, I have to color this one. This is the one for the inside. And while I'm at it, and coloring, let's do a... What color did I do the flower on the inside? I did it blue. Blue. No. It's dark pool party. There isn't a Coastal Cabana blend, but the pool party works really well with Coastal Cabana. There we are. Now you could do the flower, the leaves and everything if you wanted, but I'm not going to. Hey, we'll put this on the inside. Let's 
So we got big plans for the weekend. Oh, ha. hi Leanne. Thanks for joining me. How is it in your cold snowy land? I get to go to Powell River on Sunday to do a class over there with my peeps. So exciting. The last time I went, the it was so windy the ferry didn't, well the ferry was running, but it took three hours for it to dock and then it still had to go back to its home dock. So I elected to not go home that night and I ended up staying overnight, which was much nicer, much more relaxing. And then I came home the next morning and I was here in time for my Monday class. But that's the price you pay for going to Powell River or any place where you're dependent on the ferry system. Okay, and we're going to put this B inside. So just a, a little bit of tear and tape on the back. I've used tear and tape a lot today and not um, Tombow glue, but Tombow works too. Now, this one I put facing up. This one I'm going to put facing down like it's attacking the flower. Isn't that cute? <laughs> okay. Wink of Stella. Uh-oh. There it is. My wink of, one of my Wink of Stellas is out in my studio for my class today. But I have another one. Okay, so I'm just adding Wink of Stella to the bee wings because... Like I said before, you can never have too much Wink of Stella. Good morning, Jackie. Okay, Wink of Stella. And then we have the rhinestones to put on, and they're the holiday rhinestones. Now let's just do the inside one too, because we can. And you can use Wink of Stella anywhere you want. So let's just do a bit on the flowers too. Here we are. Now, you can color these flowers if you want, but I like I like having them black and white and then adding bling to them. So these are the holiday rhinestones, so they come in. Oh, I don't remember what was there. What color was there? Because we've used it all. And green and light blue and um, dark blue that was. That's what color that was. And then these gorgeous yellowy ones. There's some red ones. So you just pick which ones you want to use. And I'm just going to put them in the center of these flowers. Now, this card, I was lucky I had three. This one, I only have two. And I don't want it to be lopsided. And you need to have your embellishments in sets of three because that's more pleasing to the eye. Where did that one come from? Go back there. So how about if we put it, let's see, there, there, right there. There we go. Three holiday rhinestones. So there you go. What do you think? cool card, eh? And it didn't take too long. Look at that. It's only 9.30. I've done all that nattering and we've made a card. So I want to show you the fun folds that we're doing. So this one, I have to figure out who I cased it from. Um, the The fun fold part of it is um, from Don Griffith. The rest of it is a Glenda Mollett original and it's using the Timeless Tropics. Let's turn the card so it's right side up. The Timeless Tropical stamp set. And I used, remember back in the holiday catalog, we had this shimmery crystal effects. This is still available. So I used it on the stamen in the middle of the flower. So it's kind of got a raised 3D effect on it. So you say shut up and let's see the inside. So this is the wow part of the card. Look at that. Isn't that the coolest thing? I love it. It's fun to play with and it's fun to do. And it really shows off this beautiful designer paper well. 
So that card is, I'm calling a tropical fun fold. But the one I did yesterday, this one is a, the fun fold part is from Rich Adkins, Rick Adkins, Rick Adkins. And then I use the soon to be released um, flowering foil specialty designer paper. And I showed you that last week, what it looked like. So look at this card. Can you see it? So the um, designer paper has rose gold and silver foil accents. And I colored some of the flowers, not all of them, just random ones and only in silver. And I used the light in the dark purple posy. So there's the light purple posy and there's the dark. So if you want those flowers to be more, more colorful, then go up a step from purple posy and use Highland Heather. That's the color of the cardstock, Highland Heather. So this card, it folds flat to mail it. So you just slip this part out and you have this part left with a couple of slits to sit that back inside. Let me get my recipe off here so you can see. And then on the back, I chose to put two pieces so I could have some stamping as well as some place for you to write. So it folds into an envelope, but I had to make a special envelope for it. So I just used a piece of our 12 by 12 Whisper White cardstock and then the envelope punch board that is no longer available, but lots of us have them. So it just slips in the envelope. It does, really it fits. It's all caught up. <laughs> okay, take my word for it. It does fit. Maybe it's this way it goes in. There we are. So there, see, it fits right inside the envelope. And you pop it in the mail. It's a little bit thick. Um, I'm not sure whether it'll go through the, the quarter inch, but it'll definitely go through the three quarter inch slot in Canada Post to put it in for um, regular mail instead of parcel mail. So you just slip the sides into, or slip the, the points in here. Wait. It works that way too, but it actually goes this way. And then I just cinch mine up or you can leave it out here. Depends on how wide you want your card. So it just, it just sits down inside there. So you get the full effect of all of those pointies. It's called a star easel card. And then I use the, okay, forever blossom stamp set continuing on with the purple posy flowers and then of course wink of Stella on them and a cute little bow with the silver metallic edged ribbon. There we are. So this is going to be one of my fun fold classes. I'm in April. I'm going to do an over the top class that, um, it's going to take longer than normal to do, but there's two techniques and this is one of them. And the other one is a watercoloring technique. So there we go. All right, Natasha, lovely card. Oh, Natasha, thanks for joining. I'm gl so glad you could make it. And of course you can always watch the video on the replay once I get it posted. So there's the cards for today with a little bit of information. Um, second release celebration starts on the February the, nope, March the 3rd, Tuesday, March the 3rd. So we've got another week and a half to go. So the current, the first release celebration stuff is available, which includes the honeybee, no, golden honey designer paper. I hope you have a wonderful day. Stampin' Smiles. Bye for now, and I'll see you next Thursday at 9 a.m. Bye-bye.